different intervals. So we're going to talk about uh, series trace terminations right now. So series trace terminations involve placing a terminating resistor between the driver and the transmission line. And the resistor is placed as close to the driver's side as possible. And its value is chosen so the combined impedance of the resistor and driver matches the trace impedance. So in order, in this case, the driver is 23 ohms and the line impedance is 50 ohms, you must implement a series resistor 27 ohms near the, near the driver end. The reflection coefficient, coefficient will be zero. So every type of Termination has its pros and cons. So here, series termination resistor provides a good noise margin with low power consumption. It requires a single resistor that can easily be integrated into the PCB layout. And in terms of the con, the additional series resistor slightly delays the signal propagation uh, time. So how, again, how to choose the series terminate, termination terminating resistor values. Uh, we can see the oscilloscope waveforms with different series termination resistors. Assume the driver impedance is 23 ohms and the line impedance is 50 ohms. To match these impedances, four series termination resistors are incorporated with the values of 10, 22, 33, and 47. If the sum of the driver and termination impedance exceeds the line impedance, it will cause overshooting, as you can see in the waveform for 10 and 22 ohm resistors. If the total impedance of the driver and termination resistor is higher than the line impedance, it results in undershooting in the waveform. And if the driver impedance um, is closer to the target of 50 ohms is the last example. So always choose a termination resistor that balances driver and line impedances to minimize overshooting and undershooting. Series resistors work as damping resistors. So a series resistor helps achieve a critically damped state in the signal transmission and reach the fastest settling time without overshoot or oscillation. These resistors usually have values below 100 ohms ensuring the signal reaches the desired logic level smoothly. In this process, you can employ the resistor inductor capacitor model to calculate the transient oscillation frequency and damping. By knowing the load capacitance and inductance, you can precisely calculate the value of the series terminization resistor needed to achieve critical damping. Next, we have the parallel trace termination. Parallel traced termination involves placing a shunt resistor in the parallel with the receiver. This matching resistor absorbs all reflections at the far end of the transmission line. The resistor should be close to the receiver for better results. The termination, the termination resistor's value must match the termination line's impedance. The parallel resistor is connected either to VCC or ground, depending on IC's internal circuitry. Uh, pros and cons of parallel Termination pros, unlike series termination, termination resistors, parallel termination does not introduce any additional time delay and change in signal rise time, thus reduces the propagation delay. And it's well suited for daisy chain topologies where multiple devices such as DDR are connected in series along a sig single signal trace. And then the Con is the shunt termination, termination incurs higher power consumption than the series termination. So in this waveform comparison, the initial display reveals instances of both overshooting and undershooting. And in the second waveform, which is parallel termination, it shows a notable absence of significant reflections presenting a more stable signal profile. Then we have uh, Thevenin's termination. This technique uses Thevenin's equivalent circuit at the load end to terminate the transmission line. This equivalent circuit typically comprises two resistors parallel to the signal trace and the voltage source. The values of the resistors are chosen such that the impedance of the equivalent circuit is equal to the trace impedance. And the source voltage is equal to the voltage at the non-terminated line. So pros and cons, this, this termination strategy provides less signal attenuation without any timing delay. It allows for level adaptation, enabling the adjustment of signal levels between different circuit stages. And it does have some drawbacks compared to other termination methods. 
Um, routing involves a little bit more power and higher cost due to the additional resistors engaged in the circuit. And it also increases the space occupied by the termination circuitry. Then we have AC trace termination, and which is achieved by introducing a pack capacitor in series with a parallel terminating resistor. It reduces the power dissipation problems of parallel termination strategies, it, and it provides effective termination over a broader frequency range than fixed resistors used in DC termination. And the technique can adapt to dynamic changes in the signal voltage levels and is well suited for applications with varying data rates. Uh, so it consumes more power and is sensitive to component value and tolerance variations. So bidirectional trace termination, it's, it's an extension of the parallel termination uh, for multipoint applications. So bidirectional termination allows multipoint and two-directional communication on the same trace. However, only half duplex transmission is permitted. Termination resistors are placed at the extreme ends of the line to minimize stub lengths. The value should match the signal line characteristic impedance. Here, two termination resistors double the driver load, hence the driver current and power dissipation increase. However, the noise margin reduces as the driver output level decreases. And depending on the complexity is generally implemented in high speed uh, PCB designs. So methods to terminate a differential pair, differential series termination, a resistor is placed in series with each line of the differential pair close to the driver end. It minimizes the driver's power dissipation. Differential parallel termination, a resistor is added parallel to the lines. Parallel termination addresses all differential reflections, but doesn't eliminate common mode reflections. Increases, and it increases drive current and might create trace stubs. Differential AC termination combines a resistor and capacitor in series at the end of each trace in the differential pair. And this approach reduces the DC current loop and drives power dissipation and is suitable for low speed control lines. Impedance matching using transformers. So transformers uh, serve as an essential component to align the impedance of the source with the load. They operate across a wide range of frequencies and can alter voltage levels without affecting system power. Here's the formula to calculate the matching transformer's turn ratio. To ensure impedance matching, introduce a matching transformer, such as an iron core transformer, with an appropriate turn ratio between the source and the load. A lower voltage side with fewer turns signifies lower impedance. A higher voltage side with more turns corresponds to higher impedance. So impedance matching in high-speed PCBs. Uh, what determines the impedance of a PCB? So the following factors determine the impedance of your designs. Wider traces result in lower impedance. Impedance is inversely proportional to the square root of the laminous dielectric constant. Smaller the distance between the signal trace and the reference plane, lower the impedance. 